Leonard Dillon was a double wire sufferer and an inmate of the prison facility on Fiorina 161, a Class C work correctional unit. He acted as a religious leader, preacher and supervisor for a group of inmates that were also the last residents of their prison facility after its closure. And while he wasn't the greatest of men, he certainly did try to redeem himself in the eyes of God through his efforts and final sacrifice in the film Alien 3. So in today's character catalogue, let's explore Leonard Dillon. Dillon was born in the year 2138, somewhere in the United Americas. We know close to nothing about him other than sometime during his life he was arrested for two counts of rape, both times against females, and first degree murder. This resulted in his containment and imprisonment on Fury 161, and remained there post its closure by Wayland Yutani under serial number YY82013. He remained uh, behind along with a small group of prisoners and a few staff members in order to keep them in check. During his time there, he would eventually develop into the man we saw him as in the film. He learned to genuinely care for his fellow prisoners and formed a tight bond with them. He eventually wished to atone for the wrongs that he had done in his past and saw it as the entire facility's need to correct their wailing morals and repent under the watchful eye of God. They formed a brotherhood together and believed in a somewhat Christian version of God. Through this, Dylan and the others worked hard to better their lives and those who didn't would have to feel Dylan's wrath, as he was always quick to physically or verbally uh, reprimand them for their sinful ways. Anyone who dared upset the now calm and bowed brothers would suffer consequences. Dylan would routinely lead his brothers in prayer. He did this to remind them of their sacred vows and in time when they needed reassuring in tough situations. In the year 2179, Ellen Ripley would arrive on Fiorina 161 via her Type 337 EEV. Her introduction to the fray uh, would upset some brothers um, and their uh, balance that they had achieved. If all, if not most, of the people within the facility were double Y syndrome sufferers and so were genetically predisposed to high levels of sexual aggression. Before meeting Ripley for the first time, Dylan was busy scolding Boggs and Rains for their disrespectful and insulting behaviour towards Golic. Upon uh, his uh, knowledge of Ripley's arrival, it troubled Dylan a great deal, knowing that a woman, let alone an outsider, had arrived as temptation to them all. Dylan was present for the cremation of Hicks and Newt as he gave his words of prayer for their passing. He had said his piece of respect and was done with it. Later though, Ripley tried to thank Dylan, and he showed visible hostility. He wasn't happy about Ripley's presence on their world and wished to be rid of her for everyone's sake, letting her know that he would only acknowledge her under his religious beliefs that instructed tolerance of others. But this woman wouldn't let up and Ripley would eventually land herself in trouble with some of the brothers a little later. On her journey around the facility, she was uh, eventually confronted by a gang of prisoners that prepared to rape her. They had overpowered her, and just as Dylan made his presence known by striking one of the brothers with a metal pipe, he began to tell her to leave as he was going to re-educate the brothers and discuss some matters of the spirit, as he began savagely beating the group with a pipe uh, as punishment for trying to renounce their vow of celibacy. A while later, after the discovery of the Xenomorph, Dylan uh, saw the creature almost like the wrath of God or some kind of unholy thing come to bring punishment and rapture upon them. When the creature attacked and murdered Andrews, the prior leader of the facility, Dylan was turned to by the prisoners for leadership. Not thinking highly of himself, he suggested instead Ripley, as she was supposedly an officer and had previous experience dealing with this dragon beast. They concocted a plan to burn the creature into a nuclear waste a container in order to trap it. 
However, the plan went horribly wrong and led to a bunch of deaths on the prisoner's side. Nevertheless, though, they were able to trap the beast. If not for Dillano activating the sprinkler systems, there may have been many prisoners burnt during the process, and his brothers likely would have perished. After the beast's entrapment, Ripley informed him that Wayland Yutani would be along shortly to retrieve their specimen, taking it away for study, an act that could potentially unleash the xenomorph on the entirety of humanity across the Middle Heavens, and that therefore it was their responsibility to kill the creature. Dylan, by this point, had built up a genuine respect and a basic friendship for Ripley, and had actually come to like her. However, despite this, Dylan was apathetic. He was not looking to see any more of his brothers harmed, especially not in the name of outsiders. Dylan could care less if the company destroyed themselves or the rest of humanity with their foolish actions. Only when the dragon was released from captivity by Golic did Dylan once again agree to fight it, realising it for the threat it was. During these events, Ripley had become aware of a grim truth, an embryonic queen chestburster was gestating within her. She went to Dylan for assistance, wanting him to kill her and end her suffering to put an end to yet another potential xenomorph creature. In Dylan's uh, cell, Ripley asks him to kill her, unable to do the deed herself. He thinks about it for a moment, but then angrily refused, pointing out that her newfound immunity to the beast because of her unborn may be vital as an asset in fighting it. Dylan did eventually relent, admitting that he would be happy to kill her, however not until the beast was gone. Time was of the essence, and every hour Wayland Jutani got closer to their system. In response, Dylan and Ripley formulated a last-ditch effort to rid themselves of the demon from the stars. The brothers acted as bait in hopes of luring the xenomorph into uh, the mould at the lead works. Once there, it could be drowned in molten lead, and many of the prisoners were object to the plan. They saw it as a suicide run. However, once again, Dylan showed his influence and leadership, as he gives a rousing speech of courage and got them on board. Unfortunately, though, in the uh, inaction of the plan, many of the prisoners either couldn't keep up or quickly became confused by the maze-like leadworks leading to Dylan losing all but one of his brothers in Morse. This forced Ripley into action as Dylan eventually succeeded in luring the Xenomorph runner into the lead mold in a cunning manoeuvre. By pretending to attack Ripley, the Xenomorph immediately recognised him as a threat to the Queen within Ripley, therefore causing the Xenomorph to instinctively set its sights on Dylan. However, when he attempted to climb to safety, the beast simply followed. Out of options and no way out, Dylan had only one card left to play. He dropped back down to the bottom of the mold and coaxed the xenomorph towards him, offering himself up to the beast, giving Ripley uh, enough time to escape. As he awaited his death, he told Ripley that God would take care of her now, as he was savagely torn apart by the xenomorph creature in its rage-filled act. As Dylan was being attacked, they poured the molten lead that would forever remain as Dylan's tomb. Leonard Dylan died on the 11th of August, 2179, in one last attempt at redemption for the horrors he had committed in his early life. One last time, he tried to prove to God that maybe he wasn't such a lost soul. And despite his violent death, he did allow for Ripley and his final brother in Morse to pour the molten lead on the creature and kill it through thermal shock by activating the facility's sprinkler system. Before I go, I just wanted to let you guys know about the merch store called Acheron's Colonial Marketplace. Here, you can pick up a variety of Acheron and alien themed merch from three distinct product lines, including shirts, hoodies, mugs, blankets, stickers, bags, and even phone cases. So if you want to support the channel and look good doing it, 
pick up some Acheron merch. But what other videos would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered, please meet me down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and go check out Project Acheron on Twitter and Discord. If you want to support me further, you can become a patron where you can get access to early and behind the scenes content, the monthly and alien day giveaways, as well as the patron only engraved set of items. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Until then, this is Project Acheron, signing off.